Hello and welcome to another Heroes of the Storm quick tip. Uh, today I wanted to talk about dealing with getting cursed on Cursed Hollow. So, in this case you can see we are on a Cursed Hollow game. We have traded some tributes and the red team is about to curse us. We have chosen to not contest because our Rainer had died and so is currently clearing up bruisers. And so, how do you best respond when you're about to be cursed? Well, number one, don't die. And I can't stress this enough. Uh, a lot of times, objectives only get the major value they do when you die and then the enemy gets to push for free with the objectives. In this case, all of us are going to be up for when the curse happens. Even if only four of us were up, that would still be fine. And so what this allowed us to do, as soon as Rainer got picked... And because of the kind of comp they had, and we knew because of owls, we knew where roughly where they were and that they were all set up for tribute. So we decided to take their boss. So once we take boss, top is essentially nullified. Curse is no longer a problem in the top lane. So that's step one. And so with curse, what you really want to do is make sure you are not letting every lane push for free. So I stage dive down here from boss to bot to make sure I can defend bot for a little while. Now I know they were just on this tribute. So I know once I stage dive in, this isn't necessarily safe, but if we draw all the enemy team or the majority of the enemy team down a bot lane, then we know where they are and we can essentially clear mid for free. And like I said, we already have boss pushing top. We could also counter push top if we want. Because defending is hard with no objective, when your towers aren't firing, your fort's not firing, etc. So sometimes, if you can, it's better to counter push than just trying to defend object. Uh, sorry, not objectives. Your structures, which aren't actually helping you. So in this case, you'll see I'm just actively killing waves. I hang out. I walk out a little too far. And they can just charge at me and jump on me because, again, these are all turned off. Now I take a lot of damage and I pop unstoppable so I don't get slowed by anything. Or if MJ had a hammer to stun me or something. Because I just want to make sure I don't die there. Because, again, if I don't die, I'm on the map. I can go do other things. And so, yeah. They get bought for it. This is all dead. What they don't really get, they lose some some uh, XP up here. The Abba can't necessarily collect it. You'll see he's going around looking for something to do. We cleared mid for free, and we got a camp pushing. So all in all, this was a relatively good curse defense for a post-10 especially. Like We took their boss play off the table... We defended all but one fort, and we kept even in XP, and actually came, may have come out a little ahead. They finally just dealt with our boss, and it took part of keep wall. So it took top fort and part of keep wall. So ultimately, because we invaded their boss when we knew we couldn't contest for tribute, we actually did more damage with that boss than they did with the entire objective. So something to keep in mind, counter pushing is good. Getting camps out there to uh, protest against other pushes and lanes you're not guarding is very good. And just in general, again, if you do not die, you can defend against uh, a curse play relatively easily, except where the enemy team has situated most of their forces. So as long as you recognize that, like I did when I immediately just ran away as quickly as my little cow butt could. Everything was good. And ultimately, the, the best thing they could have done probably is to steal our boss. But that also would have wasted all the XP they could have gotten in every other lane as well. So I don't even necessarily think that was a good play for them. So the three things to take away when you're defending a curse. One, don't die before objective if you die while you're defending or you know trying to take objective the curse is going to be magnified a lot 
So if you, for whatever reason, do not feel like you can take a fight or you feel like you can defend your lanes better than taking a team fight at that point in the game, let them have the curse. Second thing, don't be afraid to go take an enemy camp if you know the majority are setting up for a curse. Again, this all goes back to vision. If the enemy doesn't have vision on you, they won't necessarily know you're doing any of this. And if you can get camps pushing, yours or theirs, that's going to make defending your lanes a heck of a lot easier on here. And the third thing is when you are defending, make sure you realize your usual safety valves are not there. And this goes especially once the gate or sidewalls die. The enemy can freely move in and invade. But as you saw, because they have a really mobile comp, even if the gate and all the walls are up, theoretically, Karazim, Urel, Deathwing, and obviously Abba in this case, four of their heroes can attack me on the other side of this gate. They can jump the gate, essentially, and fight me over here. So you have to be very careful against some comps that can do that. All right, that's it for today. I hope this helps. Thanks for listening.